Welcome to We Call Bullshit. We are here with Paul and Brian, our two friends from the gym, let's call it. I feel like, Brian, we've definitely like gotten past the gym friendship. Yeah. Paul, I'm we just haven't. Yeah, I'm just meeting yeah. you. I just like really met you two at a comedy show. That's the first time I met you two. Oh, yeah. We talked yeah. about banana bread and blowjobs. That was our first yep. conversation. Yeah. And then Marie hit me with like this like Oprah question about like what are three things I learned from my divorce? And I was like, golly, she hitting hard, man. She going in. She going in. I love a deep yeah. conversation. Life is too short yeah. for shallow conversation and mediocre sex. That's why we true, have this true, podcast. True words. True That's words. What are we calling bullshit on today? Well, I don't know if we're calling bullshit on it, but Brian and Paul are going to call bullshit on men having low T and the signs, symptoms, and what to do about it. All right. So why? Why, why are we going here? Paul, you start. Brian, I don't know. Like, what? Why do you two feel like you're a wealth and you're able kind of to talk about this topic? It's low testosterone for all the people who said Let, what's low T is it's called. It's low testosterone. We're, we're going deep into hormones today. Oh, so listen, my reason why it's called bullshit, I think that there's an attack on men and masculinity and it's happening a lot through our food. It's happening a lot through conditioning, programming. Um, the reason why I like talking about this is I've been doing men's work for, for 10 years and for people that are like, what the hell is men's work mean? It basically I support men's initiation. So this was something that was done for men hundreds and maybe thousands of years ago. I do this through the Mankind Project. I do this through All Kings. Uh, I've gone through my situation with divorce, parental alienation, um, drug use, sex abuse, all this stuff that brought me almost to my end. And uh, and I've recognized that there are some things that I needed to address. And testosterone, especially working with a lot of men, I see is something that's got is some myths to it. And I think that men are losing what it means physically and spiritually to be a man, to be masculine, and testosterone, low testosterone is part of it. Chris, Preach. just went to church. Hmm? <laughs> Preach. Keep preaching. No. This is like so what we talk about all the time, about how the, the rise of the masculine feminine energy is just mm -hmm. crazy. Women are becoming the men they want to date, and men are losing sight of what it means to be a man. So I am all in on this. Yeah. Oh, we about yeah. to go in. <laughs> oh, 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 Brian's like, I'm just, I'm just bringing the facts. Brian's bringing the facts. <laughs> Newly married Brian is just bringing the facts. Look at yeah. that. Yeah, look oh, at yeah. you. Yeah. Well, first, congratulations on your new Thank journey. You. Um, yes. So, but you, really, Brian, you have when you when you say you regurgitate so much knowledge, right, and wealth and information that you receive, I will definitely argue that I have done that for things that you have taught me. From, you know, 20 something years old to now 34. Mm -hmm. Like, I really do when I come to the gym, I always make sure I get a Brian Phil. Like, mm -hmm. even if it's just for a mm -hmm. moment, just for a little bit of a I don't know, but I don't know what you do. I don't even know if you're doing it. But I have appreciated your brain and your knowledge and just your insight for so long. So I'm a big fan. Um, uh, appreciate you. Big, big yeah. fan. You, and you got good energy. I love being around good people. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's mutual. All right. So tell us about yourself though, Brian, mm -hmm. what you do have some legit um, qualities, um, certifications, let's call it, that really give you mm -hmm. this background to speak. Paul, I'm not saying that you don't at all because all I feel good. like, yeah. um, I feel like what I've learned the most is through experiences and you seem already right. It's like you, you can't teach some things you have to learn them through real life scenarios. And so I think we are, have the opportunity to play off of all of those things right now. So Brian, let us have it. Give us a little bit of insight on who you are, what, what you do, what's your thing. Yeah. So I've been in this uh, health and uh, wellness space now for about going on over 25 years. I started when I was 19 and I just turned 45 this week. So I've been in it for a while. So I remember 
Ooh. When I probably about after eight years of being in the industry, one of my friends came up to me who was also a trainer and he's like, Hey, you want to go to uh, I think it was like in Boston and go to like a health conference. And I was like, dude, I've been doing this for like eight years. I know everything there is to know about like the body and how it works. Right. I just, that was just my mindset working out of like a meathead gym. And I remember going to this conference and by the end of day three, I realized I've hurt more people than I've helped. And I was like, mm. I was just so blown away. I was like, holy shit. Like I know nothing. <laughs> you know? Wow. So I went up, I went up to the presenters at the end of the conference. I'm like, and I basically told them like, dude, I'm blown away. I was like, I want to get on your level. Like, what do I need to do? And they all pretty much say the same thing. They're like, do not go to school for this. Find mm -hmm. the best people in the world at what they do and go study under them. He's like a lot of these doctors out there. And I really believe this about, I mean, listen, I've, I've learned a great amount of knowledge from a lot of doctors. I have a lot of them as mentors, a lot of them as good friends, but 95% of them don't know anything about health. They're just, because yeah. you got to wow. understand the way, because the, the way the colleges work, is the pharmaceutical companies they do funding for these colleges and they they want you to they want to push on a certain drug for every kind of ailment that's the way they make money so a lot of these doctors out there a vast majority of these doctors out there are just nothing more than glorified pharmaceutical reps they don't know how to cure a disease they don't know mm -hmm. how to find the etiology of something so all they do is like oh here's a pill and um, now you have this kind of issue and take this pill and hopefully it goes away. And if it covers up the symptoms for whatever reason, that's good. But those that pill later cause a reaction in another part of your body. It's almost like, you know, playing pool and you, you go to break a ball, you hit the ball in the front, but all the other balls move around, too. Yeah. So it's like you're, you're causing a chain reaction within the body. So, so you might clear something out, but it causes a deficient something else. But no, so basically what the, what you, what I'm hearing and what I and I 100% agree with you on this is cuz I say this all the time is obviously doctors have a place like broken bones surgeries mm -hmm. clearly we need doctors right but yeah. they treat the symptom they don't treat the root cause and so yeah. until you address the root cause right they're going to treat the symptom and then the drug that they prescribe for that symptom creates another symptom and then they yeah. And then they prescribe another drug for that next symptom and so on and so forth. And then there goes your, you know, your pool you guys, analogy. I remember my mom is on a lot of, you know, mental ill. She, my mom suffers from mental illness. So I've had a lot of experience with those, those drugs. There is a gamut of those. And so my mom's symptoms, not to go on a tangent, but just on medicine is my mom's symptoms from the medication that she was taking was so bad that they actually had to, pr to prescribe a medication to stop all symptoms. It was like, I, I mean, like I was full on blown. I was like, what is this new pill you're on? And she's like, well, it helps stop the symptoms from the other ones. And I'm just yeah, like, bullshit. what, yeah. what is happening she's in right vicious now? Cycle. Yeah. Yeah. My mom went to the same thing. Like she, you know, she had high blood pressure though. And for years, she, she never took care of herself. So for years, she was on the blood pressure meds and she'd have a symptoms and they're like, oh, take this, then take this, then take this, then take this. Then by the time she needed her body, her organs were like, I ain't got no more. <laughs> so she passed. So it's like, this is what happens. This is one of the reasons why Brian and I talk about a various amount of topics and the, re the things people can do for themselves outside of meds. And it's also, uh, uh, Chrissy, just like you said, it addresses the root issue because you can put a whole bunch of band-aids on a whole open wound. There's nothing's going to happen. You got to stitch that junk up and make sure it's clean. So, yeah, yeah it's I, I mean, we've got to realize, too, like our healthcare system is by far the most expensive. I think we spend like last time I took a check, I think it was like four point two trillion dollars a year in our, in our healthcare system. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's more than like triple than any other healthcare system out there. We are the efficiency rate is like we're in like the in the in the 40s out of all the country. <laughs> you know, we have one of the shortest lifespans out of any civil as any of any country out there. Something isn't working like and I think people are slowly starting to realize like our medical system is trash. Like it's, it's not doing anything and somebody needs to be held accountable for it. And I think that's our. That's all our acronym uh, government agencies or NIH or FDA or whatever it is. You know, it's, it's not working. We're, we're so heavily, we're the most heavily medicated country there is. 
So yeah. I just read a study on that. I actually went back to school for holistic health. I went to school for holistic health for three years. So that was like super eye opening because like you, Brian, being yeah. in the fitness industry forever and then you go back and you start to learn things and you're like, oh, my gosh. And prime example, yeah. I wasn't going to bring this up, but this is kind of like perfect for today. So my kids haven't had an annual physical in like two years because we don't really go to the doctor. I kind mm -hmm. of pretty much do ear infections and all that stuff holistically. So, yeah. but I'm like, okay, they were long overdue. So we went for their physicals today, their wellness checks. And of course my kids, when I, they were young, got some vaccinations, but they haven't had some in a little while, any in a little while. And so today mm -hmm. they're 12 and 14, they're due for HPV, a couple other things. So the nurse is like, are you doing them? I'm like, no. So I had to sign a waiver, right? Sign my life away saying I'm not doing it. She comes in, does the exam. She's like, your kids are super healthy, well-rounded. They're never on medication, yada, yada, yada. So then afterwards she goes, can I speak to you? So I go, sure. So she pulls me out of the office, kids are in the office and she goes, we are a vaccinating practice. I go, I know. Now I've been there since the kids were born. So 12 and 14 years now. She goes, we can no longer see your children. So I got kicked out of my pediatric practice today that I have been there since my kids were born because mm -hmm. of my parental choice mm -hmm. to vaccinate mm -hmm. or not vaccinate my children. And I said to her, I said, <clears throat> super nice. I'm not surprised, to be honest. I knew it was a matter of time. But I said to her, I go, you just got done saying to me how healthy, how well-rounded, that my children are never sick, never on medication, recover quickly. And yet you're saying that they're not allowed here because... I don't follow your vaccination policies. And so that is the epitome of big pharma mm -hmm. and our healthcare yeah. system yeah. was right there because yeah. it is not about my children and their health. It is about, about the fact that my children were messing up the percentage of vaccinated children in that office and then affects their stipend. And so that was yeah. it. Shit. And then, so yeah. you got to go. God but what's, damn, what's even more fucked up is I guarantee <laughs> if they were to try to give your kids, they would have four or five vaccination, vaccinations today if they could. All at the same time. Let's yeah. give them HPT, influenza, chicken pot, all of them. All Let's of them. Hit them hit a, yeah. hep a through Z. Give them all 26. <laughs> You know what I mean? And it's it's crazy. And listen, I believe I know I'm not far right or are for whoa. I'm not far right or far left when it comes to this. But Chrissy, it's a, a prime example of how the system is broken. There is no doubt. Right. And I just it was like, okay. I mean, I wasn't gonna argue with her, obviously. And it's fine. They're old enough to go to a family practice. And like I said, we rarely go to the doctor. They just had been on me because my kids hadn't had a wellness check in two years. But really what they meant is my kids haven't been in for vaccinations in a really, really long time. So they wanted to see them essentially to be able to say to me, to get me to sign a piece of paper that said I'm declining. And then that was their right to kick me out of their practice. Yeah, it's funny. Cool. I just, Carson hasn't been to the doctor in probably three years, only because he's my third kid. Not, be <laughs> <laughs> not, not, be not because of any other reason. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Carson. But this is our healthcare system and it's, we don't have a healthcare system. We have a sick care system. That's what we have. Yeah. So yeah. we, as, we you, yeah. it's our job really as people in the fitness industry that are now are awakened. And I think actually the whole COVID pandemic awakened a lot of people to this um, to really do better and choose different. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we initially wanted to start the conversation with, you know, around testosterone, but the problem with just, I think, going right into testosterone, Brian, to your point, all of us is that it's not just about one thing, right? Yeah. This is a topic right, that we're choosing to really hone in on today. But everything that we just kind of talked about for the last 10 minutes is really what is is the umbrella over all of this one very deep, specific, I'm going to call it an issue that men today are really suffering from. And Brian, Paul, so you are men. What kind of have you seen in the testosterone world that is your biggest red flag, let's call it. Like what's the, what stands out to you when you say, hey, men today, testosterone? Want to go forward <laughs> when we go first? Yeah. Uh, first thing that came to mind is titties. 
Uh, I see. I see. That's the first word came to mind, man. <laughs> so, I don't even um, myself. That didn't come to my mind. That wasn't even close to what I was thinking. Well, yeah. I, I think it's. Right uh, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. listen. I've listened to your content, so I know I can say that. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I think it's. I, I look physically at the bodies, right? So you know, I've, I've had a training certification since I was 20. So I've seen, men, I've worked with men, women, what have you. I've seen men's bodies change over the years. And even like when I've gone through some stuff, I've seen how my body changed. And also when I was a full-time trainer at Lifetime and Brian used to have these education sessions about where certain stress and where, where these certain things are happening in the body. I was like, oh, junk. This makes a lot of sense. So I see what with, with men, I see men's bodies are different now. Even the glorification of something like a dad bod. It's like, really? We're glorified. I mean, like, hey, listen, man, as long as you're comfortable with your body, that's cool. And make sure you can at least run a mile or two, man, without freaking calling 911. So I, I see I see that as the the the, the physical um reshaping of men's bodies as something that gives me the red flag. Something's up. Yeah. And Brian, if you were to go deep into maybe why men's change based off of that is what do you, what is the science behind that? Well, I think, I mean, definitely low testosterone. I think like one of the big, one of the big things is cholesterol. When Paul and I, we did a whole two part episode on this and cholesterol, 44% of Americans, men over the age of 40 are on some kind of statin. And people don't understand what cholesterol is. Doctors don't understand, for the majority of doctors, don't understand what cholesterol is. So the way your body works, like on a, on a scientific level with cholesterol, your liver produces something called VLDLs, very low density lipid proteins, right? And those get converted into LDLs. First of all, LDL and HDL is not cholesterol. It's a transporter for cholesterol. So the LDL picks up this cholesterol, I'm sorry, gets the cholesterol brings it into the cell, into the mitochondria, where your body produces testosterone. Then whatever's left over, the HDL comes and picks it up and brings it back to the liver to create bio salts. Bio salts are important for breaking down nutrients. So when you have high HDLs, I'm sorry, when you have high LDLs, which people think is a bad cholesterol, doctors just look at a number and they prescribe you a statin. But what they don't understand are what statins do to you. So it's, there's a bunch of things. So statins, what they do is first, one of the things they do is they make your cells hard. So when you have like a hard muscle and it's not pliable, it's very easy to rip. So a lot of people that are on statins, they have leakage in all their cells. Their cells get hard, they start tearing and it loses, this pl it loses pliability. So things can't get into the cells, nutrients can't get in. Also what it does is like LDLs is like your most powerful antioxidant in your bloodstream. It's without LDLs, like your bloodstream, your blood vessels would not be able to function. You would be pretty much dead. Another thing it does is it also makes, like I said before, bio salts. So if you're on a statin and you can't produce bio salts, you can eat all the cleanest water, drink all the cleanest water in the world. You can eat the all 100% organic, but you're not getting any of those nutrients. A lot of people are like, oh, you are what you eat. No, you are what you can break down and use as energy. And mm -hmm. that's a big problem. And also another thing it does is it kills, it blocks uh, CoQ10. So CoQ10 is using the mitochondria for energy. So if you see people that are on statins, and I see this all the time, like they went to the doctor and on a statin, all of a sudden, like they're just so fatigued, they're drained, they can't get their workouts in, they're starting to put on body fat. You know, they're just like, their body's just slowing down because they can't get those nutrients in there. And just like, it, there's so many other things it does. It lowers your IQ. People don't realize it lowers your IQ because it just, blo I mean, your brain's basically made a, a lot, a good proportion of your brain is made of cholesterol and you're just lowering everything down. So if I'm going to bring it back, and I think this is really important if we're going to bring it back to testosterone and what I've learned is a lot of the times to help with cholesterol levels is weird strength training. Mm -hmm. Strength training yeah. increases your testosterone right? And testosterone and your cholesterol work hand in hand. And so I remember deep back in the day when I went through a couple certification and learning that being able to control not only your testosterone levels, but cholesterol 
through strength training is going to be something that is so much better for your body because obviously we know strength training has many, many, many benefits. But again, Brian, like you said, a doctor is never going to say you have high cholesterol. You should probably start strength training or you have high cholesterol. We should probably let's, let's look at your testosterone levels. None of that happens. It is problem, <clears throat> symptom, medication mm -hmm. all the time, but all the things in our body work together. Yeah. Um, what's interesting too, everyone pretty much, I'm sure we all have heard of the Framingham study, the, one of the largest studies on heart disease out there. So they did a study like on like, it was, I think it was like close to 10,000 or 20,000 people. And they found out when you're, so in our, in our society, when you have a cholesterol over 200, it's almost like, Ooh, red flag, you know, time to go on a statin or something. When your cholesterol is around 200, you have a 30% higher chance of having a heart attack. When it gets below 180, you have a 400% chance higher of getting a stroke. So statins actually cause heart disease in the body. They don't, they don't tell you this. Well, everyone knows it's a $20 billion a year industry, but no one's in the boardroom thinking like, okay, how can we make, uh, you know, what can we do? How do we get rid of these statins? It's $20 billion. Pharmaceutical companies don't care. It's such a, it's such a scam. And it, it's 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 just crazy. It's just like it's like Chrissy was saying before. We don't have a we have a health sick system. You know, we don't have a government. We have a corporation, and the majority the main thing is just to get money, get as much money as we can out of people. Right. Everything's business. And, and the sad part is, is you know, when you really start going down the rabbit hole, you can't stop. It's like the train that just keeps going, and you're like, where is this end? And there's really like no end once you start like really diving deep into our, our government and our, and big pharma and our yeah. and medicals and all that yeah. stuff. Um, so Brian, the one thing I wanted to you to share is, so as obviously we talked about this before we started recording, but can you talk about how testosterone ha has gone down significantly in men over the last yeah. few decades and kind of what's attributing to that decline in testosterone? Yeah. So like the average, like, uh, 22 year old today has the same testosterone levels on an average 67 year old 20 years ago. It's scary. And that kind of brings up our kind of a point too. I mean, I don't know if there's a direct correlation, but you know, Paul started talking about like the, like the feminization of men, you know, that can be, a, <laughs> that can be a big, you know, a big part of it too. You know, when you don't, when you don't, when you can't build muscle and you start having like, you know, so another thing too, like a lot of people think, anger, depression, like rages, they're all has to do with high testosterone. It's actually the opposite. People with high Let them know, B. People with high <laughs> testosterone. <laughs> like calm people. You know, the more, less testosterone you have, the more aggressive you are. You know, it's other things. It could be like bigger the titties, hormone. bigger, the, bigger yeah. the road rage. Yeah. 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 Bigger the, rage, nice the pepper. Yeah. <laughs> But the roid rage is not usually caused by too much testosterone. It's usually like when somebody like overdoes with like growth hormone. So there's a big yeah. difference between that androgen and another androgen. So, you know, people that, you know, like they just, they're just going crazy, <laughs> you know, it, it messes with your brain it messes with depression, anxiety, throws off all your neurotransmitters. It's, it's so much going on. And to kind of lead into your next uh, question, like, you know, what's causing it. I mean, we talk about statins, we talk definitely food. Our food supply is actually trash. You know, our food, like our, I mean, to understand nutrition, you really have to understand soil and our soil is about our, our food. Like you take an average piece of say a broccoli or a, a vegetable has 20% of the nutrients it did 50 years ago because our soil is trash because we, we sprayed our crops with like glyphosate's a huge thing. You know, yeah. we, 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 we don't, we don't do farming correctly. We just spray everything and then we use pesticides on everything and it kills the soil. When you don't have clean soil, you can't grow optimal food. So all our body's deficient in things. And, it, and we're at a point too. Everyone's like, well, I don't need supplements because, you know, I, I eat clean. It doesn't matter. You can eat the cleanest shit you want, but if you're on drugs that are causing these nutrient imbalances, then you're eating, you know, food in that state in the U S from our shit soil, like you're not getting this stuff in you. Like it's, it's Isn't not it, happening. It's amazing. When I think of like, you can go back to like M&M &M Mars chocolate, right? Every mm -hmm. like cacao tastes very different, right? A cacao nib, mm -hmm. like they all taste very different. So it's all a science project. When you like make a Hershey's bar, it's like, mm -hmm. how is it that every single Hershey's bar tastes exactly the same? 
because yeah. it's a science project. It's not food, it's science. Mm -hmm. And now even our whole foods, our whole crops, how is every single potato starting to look the same? Every zucchini looks the same because it's mm -hmm. a science project. It is no longer yeah. that, you know, I used to have a garden, you know, at my old house and you would pull up a potato and some were skinny and weird looking and carrots had like five different mm -hmm. arms and they were growing yeah. all nasty and tasty. Mm -hmm and healthy. But like all of the things now, I, I like saw some video about, you know, the McDonald's French fry. Right. And it's like, literally the, it's not a potato. Yeah. I don't know what you think you're <laughs> eating, but it's not a potato. It is a man-made <laughs> potato looking, it's a potato fake. Yeah. You know, you're, it's just because it's all a science project. Now it's pesticide filled, it's drugs, God forbid, people are not even at the spark, at, at the point where they even wash their vegetables. So like we've mm -hmm. gotten people to eat vegetables, right? Now we are like fruit and vegetables. Yay, eat them. Eat the organic ones. Ideally, people don't even wash them. They're ingesting all of that shit. Yeah. You can't even eat oatmeal safely anymore. <laughs> yeah. like, and, we're, and we're talking about men, but particularly with women too. So women, you know, put on every single day lotion, skincare, makeup. Like talk mm. about environmental toxins, right? So this is something that I've been super passionate about for ever now, but, you know, our country, so just to give an example, like, you know, the UK and the European countries ban about 1500 ingredients from being used in our skincare, cosmetics, all that stuff. The United States bans about 10. That's it. So there is a massive difference in our, not just our skincare and cosmetics, but also our foods. Like, have you ever compared Heinz ketchup in the United States versus Europe, we mm -hmm. there's high fructose corn syrup and everything in the United States, but it's not in anything in the UK. So, you know, same thing. I've had a lot of friends go over to Europe for a month and lose 15 pounds yeah. when they were weight loss resistance in the United States. And that is purely because of food, um, mm -hmm. you know, and lifestyle, even like, you know, European countries, their big meal is lunch, right? Like think about the insulin spike that happens at night with the big meals and all of like really just our lifestyle has gone so far backwards. Um, and we are supposed to be like the most advanced country in the world. And I really feel like we are so far backwards and that everything is just kind of, you know, you really have to fend for yourself and grow your own food to even really consider it to be nutrient. And I love what you said, Brian, like we're not what we eat, we're what we absorb. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's so much of what we are ingesting is not getting absorbed. And a lot of it doesn't have the nutrients that we need. Yeah. So, like the double click on what you said there, right, Paul, the yeah, guys, uh, double yeah, click on what you said there is if we take our food supply and we drop it in every single country, it would be illegal in over 30 countries. Like they would look at our food and be like, yeah, we're not serving that shit. You know, <laughs> just like, just get it out. It's, it's so bad, but you're right though. Like, you know, I've been, I've been to like, countries before that are like, you know, I'm eating just like I'm eating here, not really working out because I really don't, there's not too many gyms in third world countries <laughs> and coming back, I'm like lean, I'm like vascular. I'm like, holy shit. Like you just see a big difference. You're nourished. You are nourished. Yeah, I'm nourished. And I don't eat that much out there because it's so nutrient dense, all their food that you don't, you can eat, probably eat literally half of what you're eating here and still get the, like the, so much better quality of food. Well, and your ghrelin response, you know, the, your yeah. hormone that tells you that you're hungry isn't spiked by your brain on your sugar high, right? On yeah. this, We're just trying to consume natural ingredients here. And then your body is like triggered like a dopamine response because you're having like our mm -hmm. food here is like a drug. And then what happens yeah. right over there? You're probably not as hungry because your ghrelin isn't like, hey, Brian, let's get addicted yeah. to more of this shit over here. Paul, what yeah. were you going to say? I'm loving the conversation. And, you know, I'm going to call bullshit that this... Most dudes aren't even on the level that you cats are on right now. <laughs> like, yo, I feel you about eating the right thing. But, like, most cats are like, yo, listen, I got this coupon for two fucking Wendy's Dave singles. That's all I got in my freaking wallet right now. Okay? Yep. Most guys are like, hey, I'm just getting out of work. I don't give a shit about what soil it grew in. Is that a prime rib? Oh, junk. Okay. Is that some mashed potato? <laughs> like, yo, listen, I, I hear where you're coming from. And I think the, the shift is to get guys to give a shit. Guys oh. don't give a shit about their body because most of the time we see it as a utilitarian type of device because that's what we've been taught. That's yeah. the conditioning. So right. yeah, I think my thing I is, think that's overall for everyone. Like we're so much in tune to like having self, self uh, quick gratification. We're not looking in the long term. 
And everyone's like, and I talk to people, I'm like, dude, try to eat as much organic as you can. Isn't that expensive? Well, no, why wow, they have the, like the Louis, Louis Vuitton bag and their Mercedes well, Benz keys in, in their purse. And I'm like, well, listen, you can either spend a little bit more now or you can spend a lot more later on drugs and surgeries and cancer treatments. Like, what do you, what do you want? You know, but Brian will I call think, that out too. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you said that. But I think that goes with our lack of masculinity. Like the money mindset surrounding that is so about like the men have just become feminized, even in their, yeah. their money mindset. Right. Like they're, you know, I, that's all I have in my pocket. Well, your job and correct me if I'm wrong, men, but it's to go out, provide, figure it out, right? So if that is a priority for you, which it should be, because we all wish for a lot of things until we don't have our health, and then the only thing we want is our health, then that yeah. becomes the number one thing, right? Money you can always make more of, but that goes along with the feminization of you know masculinity, how you know men aren't going out there anymore. They're not providers. They're not protectors, and that's the money mindset, but I think that's part of this whole overall um, agenda, right, is to have men be weaker, out of shape, yep. less financial control. Yep. Like, this is all part of the bigger agenda. So yep. that's the whole thing. So actually, yeah. you want to talk about that, Paul, because I feel like you're ready to go on this. About Yo, how- man, I'm, it's, it's, it's so layered, like, especially, like, the work that I've been doing for these for all these years to see men that come in that have like it all together. I mean, I mean, you think I've, I've, I've had guys go through these weekends that are executives, dude that just did 20 years in prison. It's like they all have this facade of what masculinity is. But in reality, it's like there's still even though I hear what you're saying, like, hey, you know, you're going to go out, provide, figure it out. Right now, there's such a um, there's such a pressure, I think, on men to go out and you got to be this and they're never taught what that even means they're never taught that for themselves so what you're seeing is more men that are that are inactive even if you look at like the dating scene like most guys aren't really participating in um in the dating in the dating scene because what are they doing they're playing call of duty on the freaking thing and, and now look at porn. their and watching porn, watching right? Porn. Like, listen, fellas. You want to fuck up your testosterone, throw on porn Watch every porn. day. Yo, listen, this is true. <sighs> and, it, and it's like, and it's, a, and it's, and the thing is too, is it's a mindset because now you're looking at this thing that is strictly entertainment. You're energetically thinking that's real and you're spiking your testosterone. But in reality, you're like, oh my God, I can't even talk to this woman right now. Or like, yeah. I want to do this with this woman. Listen, what's happening in those porns is not real makes yeah, you same, weaker and it makes you weaker and stupider and that honestly too. That we too. just inter- we just interviewed um kyle newell and he owns my, my cousin oh it's my boy no, yeah, it's my, I grew up kyle with newell, yeah and so he <laughs> went really viral he's viral now on instagram but he went viral yeah. one of his reels we talked about at length with him because i wanted him to share was three things men don't do and one was watch porn and masturbate and it went wildfire because you know how many people were triggered and like what do you mean we don't do all this and he's like if you can't impulse control that you're dead in the water for everything else in your life because that is the number one thing that you need to have you know impulse control over and that is something that dictates everything else so that was like super interesting because if you go read the comments on that it was just Oh, yeah. isn't, it, isn't it so messed up? Like I call bullshit on men thinking that they're so masculine for watching porn. I think men like that's the uh, most like, sorry, outside perspective, like mm-hmm. go g- come back to reality. If you're a man, come back to reality. Like you're, that's the least masculine thing you could do is watch other people have sex. It's like, I'm going to go far off because I'm in a little mood right now, but it's go like, I don't, know how you, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but it's like, if a man sits on his ass all day and watches other men play sports, I'm concerned. I'm like, all you doing is just watching other people, other men play with men, I'm like stand up, go outside, go play something, go do something, go use your body. Like I get, I love sports. I'm not saying that, but that (laughs) that connection is just like, you're spending your life watching other people do what you should be doing. Yeah. And it's like, like, come on, like do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Sorry. Tangent. This, this, this is a really, this is interesting because I'm even thinking about, 
the fact that men rarely go to the doctors either. And it's far from, hey, because they're healthy. It's because they really usually don't give a shit. Like, mm -hmm. And the men don't know their history. So because men tend not to talk. I mean, because listen, Marie, you're talking about like, hey, let's watch football. And then even like the, the body language of men when they connect, it's like this. Yeah, look at Saquon Barley, went to the Eagles. Like, you're not even connecting with the cat, right? Yeah. So where this in itself is is creating this, this structure where, okay, men don't matter. Like, there's a there's an underlying that it's like, okay, you don't matter. Just do what you got to do, and, and that's it. I'm but really now happy it's like, saying this. Yeah, I mean, I think it's important because, you know, I'm encouraging. Like, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I didn't like going to the doctor because I got high blood pressure. I was like, this mother who is going to put me on medication – and that's what my mom did. My brother had a heart attack. You're not going to get my ass, but I had to get on blood pressure meds. Then my brother had colon cancer, found out my dad had prostate cancer. So like I was, much as I was resistant to get all those tests, my sister was like, go get your colon exam. And I was like, I'm not, nobody's going up my pooter tutor. Cause I'm, <laughs> no, man, no, I don't no, know no, about wait. this. Yeah. Like I'm just saying, like, like I'm, speak, I'm speaking that because that's a mat, that's a man's mentality. Yep. No one's going to go up here. But at the same time, if you get colon cancer, they take out half your gut and you die. What would you have done if you had a different choice? Pooter shooter. So this, yeah, the <laughs> pooter shooter. Yeah, that, was, yeah, that, that thing. Yeah. But really, it's like, you know, and, and this is this is the thing where I, I love what Brian and I are doing as men. And it's like even like teaching yoga, I like teaching like when people see I'm a, I'm, I'm a man, it's like I'm a heterosexual man, a heterosexual black man teaching yoga. They're like, what the Oh, OK. Yeah. Like it's a different even though it's 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 just I think people men seeing more men in those types of positions, men seeing more men act authentically masculine. When So when you're talking about Kyle saying like men don't masturbate, men are free of ma masturbation and porn. Men's concept like and I'm going to go all chakra energy, woo woo, but like our sacral chakra energy right by our by by our sex region. That's never, that's rarely developed in men. Women, you get your monthly cycle. So you get on a regular basis to deal with femininity and your body. Men, it's just like, oh my God, you got, you got your but, balls drop. But, but you got Paul, some pubes, you know? Can I actually <laughs> argue that for a second? So I think well, the yeah. problem here, because listen, I am like woo woo chakra lady to the extent mm -hmm. I'm actually a Reiki master. Like you're talking Me too. Oh! oh, all right. Oh, shit. Oh, Let's go, Paul. Girl. <laughs> You guys operate on a 24 hour cycle, right? We operate on a 28 day cycle. We operate with the moon or we should. However, mm. tell me in today's day and age where a woman is doing all of the things, right? Breadwinner, mom, friend, partner, all of the things where we actually get to relax into our femininity when we're on our bleed. That shit don't happen. No, it doesn't happen. So like we are so far away from what nature intended us to be. And I think mm -hmm. like they're trying to treat us like little men. And yeah, so- yes. And we are not little men. We don't operate that way, but we are in that cycle now. And it's become, I actually just posted about this on International Women's Day because typically mm -hmm. I would be like, I could do anything a man can do. And listen, while that I may be true. I saw that post, brilliant. Okay, while, may yeah. that, while that may be true, I don't fucking want to anymore because mm -hmm. I'm taking my femininity back and saying, hey, wait a minute, this is not in alignment with like what nature intended or what feels good to me. And so mm -hmm. I even like, you know, I teach alpha. So I'm teaching, you know, women are strength training and they're like, I feel weak today. And I'm like, where are you on your cycle? And they're like, I'm yeah. about to bleed or I'm bleeding. And I'm like, hold the phone. This is why, like your body is not like, this is biologically correct for you to feel this way. Go take mm -hmm. a yoga class, like do accessory work, do an incline walk, like teaching women how to operate around their cycle is so important because we're missing that link that truly connects yeah. us to our feminine and our nature. That was it. That was my rant. Can I bring it back? No, thank you. Yeah. Can I bring it back? And I wonder what you guys think about this is if we talk about calling bullshit on men and them lowering their testosterone, then do we dare talk about how women's testosterone has risen? Yeah. I, mean, well, I think that's a lot, I think a lot of environmental, <laughs> a lot of environmental factors. Cause like yeah. we, I posted a short on this a little while ago and, and, uh, I forgot like where I learned it from. I have a guy's book back there, but I saw that I, I did a conference with an endocrinologist uh, out in California, maybe like 15 years ago. And he was saying that everything you do in life either makes you male or female. 
Hmm. So you got you to understand, like, if you start as a male, if you start having, like, negative thoughts, that slowly starts turning you female. If you start eating Big Macs all the time, it slowly starts. I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm like, again, I'm not going to wake up in, in a month and have a vagina. It's not going to doesn't work that way. But <laughs> Could you, you imagine? Know, I, like, I probably <laughs> have and you just got married too, bro? That's not <laughs> a good look, like, man. Yeah, my <laughs> wife will not be happy with this. <laughs> I'll be like, little man, get out there this working. Me. What are you saying? What if, I'm, I'm kind of, what do you mean? What are you saying? So everything that you do in life on a, on a hormonal level will either make you masculine, a little more masculine. I'm talking like small portions or a little more feminine. But if you do this over a long period of time, it's it's going to make drastic changes. That's why like when, when, when women get older, they start, they their bodies kind of shift a little. They lose a little bit of estrogen. They start getting more testosterone. And it's a lot, a lot to do with your normal cycles, but it also has a lot to do with our environment. It has a lot to do with our food supply, or a lot to do with any kind of like drugs, negative thoughts. It starts tur- it turning you. So anything that like males, they start maybe having like, you know, more man boobs or, you know, they whatever it is. Women might grow, start growing more hair in places that they normally don't have hair or it could be it could be a lot of other other symptoms. But I think that plays a role like like a huge part like your lifestyle i think lifestyle is everything first of all it's your thoughts your thoughts play a role in your lifestyle you know like you like mm. like Paul was talking about before like mm. hey like you know i can i can either go home and i can eat something clean or i can go to wendy's and which is easier if you have bad thoughts or you don't have you don't have a purpose in life that you haven't identified yet you're going to go for the wendy's all the time because yeah. what what purpose do you have? What higher what what's something higher than yourself you don't have? Like if if I know my purpose in life, I'm doing everything I possibly can to put as much energy in my body and limit the amount of energy I put out there, negative energy. So mm-hmm. I know exactly what I want. I remember like working with Paul uh, Paul Check and Paul was like, listen, I know exactly what my purpose on this planet is. I haven't been sick in thirty something years. I don't. I have no time to get sick. I need to have a purpose to fulfill. He's like, I have so much energy flowing through my body that it's impossible for disease to live. And I know a lot of people out there probably like rolling their lives like, yeah, whatever. Okay. You know, I got this disease because I don't have a purpose. I think that's where you start. You figure out what your purpose is. And then from there, you have like, again, you have so much energy. You, You know, we have so much energy that people don't realize you can keep Times Square lit for 30 days for one person. That's how much energy and voltage we have in our body. People don't realize that. So and you're an energetic and vibrational match. So the energy you're putting out is the energy you're attracting back. And honestly, your words, your beliefs, your thoughts have energy. And that's like mm-hmm. the biggest thing, you know. So I've been I went down the personal development rabbit hole like 12 years ago. And I have like a library full of books that I've read in every mm-hmm. single one of them. Whether it's about success, love, relationships, health, it doesn't matter. Really all stems from your mind and your energy and your vibration and what you're putting out and what you're believing. Like we all yeah. have a money mindset, right? Like we have a programming for money. We have a programming for what we deserve in relationships we have a programming believe it or not for health like we have programming that we are already you know from our gender from our upbringing nature versus nurture all of that stuff and the key is to be aware of it enough to change it and grow and so when we kind of look at if you're a male or a female really and you're kind of sitting here now listening to this podcast or just being able to reevaluate or evaluate what you have going on. And maybe you do feel like you don't have a purpose or you are you could have some hormone testosterone issues or whatever. You guys, Paul, Brian, what's your first recommendation to say that, hey, look deeper. Don't be the man who just watches the football, pushes it all to the side, doesn't care, doesn't think, doesn't act. Like, where do you start? Really, Paul, you want to take this one or you want me to go? Go ahead, B. Go ahead, man. Yeah, I mean, first thing I would do is like, I'm very big in like, again, I think you like, so like, Chrissy, you're a holistic health practitioner. That's my background, too. I'm a holistic, licensed holistic health practitioner. So they always talk about like the way your body works is or, <laughs> muscles are controlled by organs, organs are controlled by, you know, hormones, hormones by foods and thoughts. So you got to start, you got to start there. You got to start with eating clean. You have to start with, I do a lot of visualization every morning. I'm visualizing, I'm doing imagination stuff. I'm, I'm seeing myself in the future of what I want every single morning. And I do that. I do that for about, you know, anywhere from like 10 to 20 minutes and without any fail, it always comes true. Eventually it always comes true. 
So I always start there. And then what was the rest of the question? <laughs> Sorry. No, it's just, where do you start? <laughs> like, if you're yeah. a male, really, like, I'm just, I'm concerned start because I know thoughts. so many men start that, with need, that need help. Yeah, start with your thoughts. If you think that's a little woo-woo, you know, even though it's all been proven by, you know, quantum physics and science, if you think it's a little woo-woo, go to your doctor, get your testosterone checked, okay? Once you get your testosterone checked, do not ask your doctor for recommendations. <laughs> do not <laughs> go. Do. Just get the <laughs> chest and leave. Because a, a normal <laughs> testosterone these days is probably like around like 400. And doctors are like, oh, you're in the normal range. That's like, I mean, like we, Paul and I made a joke one time. I was like, you know, I, that's like 400 for a, it's like, that's like a, like a nine-year-old girl at a Taylor Swift concert. That's what a, that's what a normal <laughs> testosterone is. You know, do not follow some, find somebody out there. I have a lot of recommendations. If you want to just drop in the comments, I'll send you, I'll send you some good people to go to, but find yeah. somebody that knows what testosterone is. And even here's a little side note too. Even if you have, high testosterone, which shows up on there, it has to get converted in your testes. So you can have a lot of floating free testosterone, but if it's not getting converted in your, in your testes, that's an issue. That's why one of the, that's a, that's a big miss right there for people that we have a lot of infertility, infertility issues these days because not going to convert sperm because of just, you know, another podcast. But just <laughs> oh, yeah. don't even get started, folks. Yeah. But just because you have high testosterone, you might think there's something wrong. Go beyond what your doctor has to say. And one of the first signs of actually of high test or low uh, testosterone is every morning you should be waking up for men five to, around five a.m. to seven a.m. and you you should be able to do a handstand and piss right in the toilet. Not crazy. You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew where yes. they were going. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, in, but, <laughs> you know, in like and that's a big issue. Like a first sign for heart disease is actually erectile dysfunction. So if you're having erectile dysfunction, yeah. you it, that's a, one of the first signs for heart disease. So if you're not waking up in the morning and you can't cut diamonds with that thing, like you need to go to the doctor. What is a nor so not not as medically normal for testosterone, but what is actually like where you ideally would like your testosterone to be for men? I would say at least around probably anywhere from like 700 to a thousand from the literature that I've read, even maybe a little higher, you know, and it, you have, it's not just like total testosterone, it's free testosterone. I would just get pushed in your testes and you can do like more advanced uh, tests on that. But like a normal, like I said, a normal range is probably like three to 400, three to 450. And that's like, that's, that's a nine-year-old girl right there. It's like <laughs> doctors still don't know. How much testosterone do you think I have, Brian? Like four, four million. Yeah. <laughs> I think That's you're right. Classic. I haven't yeah. had a tested run. You're definitely right. Yeah. Yeah. Chrissy, Chrissy too. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh. So I, I, it's funny, man. When you talk about the um having uh having the morning wood, I, I just always mm -hmm. think about my grandma um when Wait, I was going through was yeah, that yeah, that. Yeah, 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 I know you weren't. Don't worry about it. So it's uh, <laughs> so my grandma when I was going to co when I was in college, I was like really tired. She um she made me this drink called the tonic, and it was sea moss. Um, like you know, my family's from Jamaica, so it's like sea moss. No, sea moss. No, sea moss. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> listen, guy and guys that are listening to this, get some sea moss, man. Yo, so anyway, she made this drink, and she was like, pod. It going make you vigorous. And I said, <laughs> Grandma. Right. And she wasn't lying, too. All right. right. I'll tell you what. Vigorous. I was, my energy was mm -hmm. tip top for school. And man, my energy mm -hmm. was tip top when I was out on date nights. So <laughs> bless up to Grandma Ma. Um, mm. So listen, I want to answer that question. Like, what, what do guys, what's the first step for guys? Step into the arena. Step to yourself. Stop the game. Stop the bullshit. <laughs> You, you are going to have to have a time where you disconnect and detach from everything you know to recreate who you are. Because right now, everything around you is going to damage you. It's going to tell you who you're supposed to be. It's going to dictate. And all it's doing is leading you into an endless pit of misery and quiet desperation. Check yourself. Check your stories. Check your patterns. Check the words that you speak to yourself. Check your purpose. And damn sure check the people that you're hanging around with. Because if they're pieces of shit, guess what? You're going to be a piece of shit. 
If they're tip top, mm -hmm. you're going to be tip top. So step vigorous. to yourselves, vigorous, vigorous. <laughs> All right. Big things, do big things. You see? So guys, seriously, step to yourself, man. Like I think it's time that we have men that learn to be men and what that means to them. It's not like the old school stuff. Like when my parents, my dad was like, was yeah. young, man. My dad was born in 1940. <laughs> like, I mean, like, it's not that time and we're different. We're different. We have the ability to be creative. We have the ability to be expansive. And also we have the ability to be able to hold a masculine space for the feminine. So you all don't have to be like, I got to do all this and this and this yes, and this. Please, yo, preach. Yo, <laughs> listen, but this is a key thing because it's about being able to hold space. That's a big masculine trait. And a lot of times, men, they talk about this frame and all that stuff. Listen, it's about having confidence. And Brian, you mentioned it. Stay on your purpose. Because if you do that, you're going to care what you put in your body. You're going to care what you do. You're going to care about your appointments. You're going to care about the soil that stuff is growing up in. And I think you get the message. And I so do step think to once, you, once you step into the arena, Paul, mm -hmm. you start to ask better questions. Stop. Yes. Stop not asking questions. Be curious. Ask the right. If you feel weird, do something about it. Start wondering if there needs something to be fixed. I don't know. I just, once you start yeah. asking the right questions and stepping to the ring and doing everything, Paul, I was lit up my soul when you were talking. Yo. It's like, it's so true. And we just, our awareness is key. Like yep. first step is being aware. And until you are aware, then none of this is going to get fixed. That's the damn Look truth. Look at your life at a 30,000 foot view. Ask the right questions. Call it step into the arena. I don't know, but we got to do something. And listen, you know what else the guys out there can do? They can go pick up my book. Because oh, I have, yeah. yes, because there's a <laughs> section in here called step into the arena where I listen, fellas, I went through all this. I went through all this. I went through the low testosterone. I went through the depression. I went through not seeing my kids. I went through almost wanting to jump off a bridge. I, I know what you're going through. You can do something different. I'm telling you, you got resources here. That's why one of the reasons being I do what we do, but like you got resources. Even what you two do, man, I'm listening. I'm like, yo, this is how women think. Yo, I'm taking notes. Oh, yeah. so, listen, really pay attention. No Pay, Pay no one wants to talk about it, Paul. No one wants to talk about it. They're like, it's so basic now. It's like, mm -hmm. do what you're told. We yep. grew up. I don't care, Brian, if you're 45, Paul, I have no idea how old you are. I'm 34. Our age range, mm -hmm. the scope of our age doesn't matter. It's when you start asking questions, whether you're 40 or 20, is you will start to know more things. Yep. You will start to live mm -hmm. a better life, a more knowledgeable, aware all of those things. And mm. it's stop just taking everything that you've been told yeah. as, as the key. Like it's not true anymore. It's not. Nope. Think for no. yourself. Yeah. And the most Write powerful thing is you can choose any day to start over and rewrite your story. I think it's, you know, that's the key. Like you hold that power. So, so many people stay in the victim mode of this is just how my life is supposed to be. Life is happening to me. No, life is happening mm. for you. Get in the arena, as Paul says, take some fucking accountability for why you are where mm -hmm. you are and make some decisions and some choices that are uncomfortable to get to where you want to go. You know, I don't it's it's really not that hard and people overcomplicate it so much. But like you are in control of you. You're in control of your thoughts, your beliefs, your mindset. And you can change it at any time. So that's the most powerful thing. They make mm. it more complicated because they don't actually they're not ready to do it. And, you know, I know you know that. It's like they yeah. make it more complicated because it's an excuse. So when well, we say level, go ahead, Brian, or go ahead, Paul. No, I, I, I'm agreeing with what you're saying. And I also want to invite people to understand that we get to create the framework for them to learn what that means, like learn how they take that action. Because we men don't, men don't get that framework. Mm -hmm. And there's this thing, it's like, you, you're supposed to know. I'm supposed to. Then all of a sudden, I'm going to go in my cave and play some video games. Yep, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. I but that's when you saying. say, though, Paul, that's when you say level up. It's like mm -hmm. spending time with people like you guys. You know, like, yeah. you know, I'm not a I'm not a man, but like, I love me a Brian minute just so I can level up. 
Like he's, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm constantly trying to level up. Like Chrissy and I talked about like our friendship is like, I'm constantly be level. Like she constantly levels me up. She constantly calls me out for what I need to be called on. She makes me a better human. And if you're dealing with Mm -hmm. people and you are surrounding yourself with people who let's just say have low testosterone, and that's not really Mm -hmm. what I mean at all. But (laughs) you know what I mean? It's when you hang out with people that are low, you're low. Yeah. And when you hang out with people who are high, you're high. Yeah. Why well, always say, show me your five friends, your five best friends, and I'll show you your future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And sure. that is the truth because you are the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with. And if yeah. you're the yeah. biggest fish in the tank, you need a bigger tank and you need to get out yeah. and find people that are in a bigger tank than you because that's how you go. Mm. Mm. So I think we, we got a bunch to- of gems. Ooh, Ooh, love it. Love it. I think we need to wrap it up. Get it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wrap yeah. it up. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, okay. Before we wrap up. it up, uh, I want to give some, I want to give the flowers, right? Because like I've listened to some of your, I've listened to some episodes and from my experience of you two, like meet you two at that comedy show and like hearing how you two interact with each other, seeing your posts. I really dig what you two are doing. I really dig your energy. I appreciate how you two show up. I appreciate how you two model femininity and human um, humanity by your realness, your vulnerability. That shit is so freaking fresh. Thank you, thank you, thank you for what you do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So it is. Keep rocking, man. You always got support from Brian and I. That's 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 the truth. That's good. And so it is. Um, you know, sometimes you need a God wink yeah. that you have that you needed something to like know that you're on the right path and you need to keep going. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I think we both no, needed that God wink a little yeah, bit more than definitely. you thought we did. So mm-hmm. we appreciate it so much. We're trying. So we are. We are certainly trying to. Um, let's call it curve, and I mean, sorry, carve a different path. And it's Blessings. hard. It's not fun sometimes. We. It's like, you know, we get it from all sides. Mm-hmm. Um, right. so That's when you know you're on the right path. Right. Yep. When you're making it's your too own. easy, then you guys start worrying about like, why is it so easy? <laughs> careful. Careful. You're right. Yep. Yep. You're right. That's no, that's good. All right. Well, to wrap this up is Paul and Brian, thank you very much for all the insights. I would love, 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 love nothing more than to dive deeper into another, you know, conversation. If you need anything, reach out to us. Paul, Brian, me, Chrissy, we are all available to you in so many different ways, whether it's a book from Paul, whether it's fun, whether it's a coaching appointment with Chrissy, or whether it's me (laughs) giving you a hard version of behavior change. I don't know, but we're Mm. here for you. Reach out. Don't do it on your own. Um, It's it's hard sometimes. So So Brian and Paul, can you guys shout out your Instagram handles and your podcast just so everybody knows so where, where they can find you? Oh, oh yeah, buddy. All right. So Instagram more than black or white podcast. Uh, also, we're on YouTube more than black or white health podcast. We have an episode coming out every Wednesday. We talk about l- the same things we started talking about at the beginning of this, where it's about things that you can do to support your own health and well-being, things that you can challenge and collaborate with your doctors to get to your best self. So listen, man, I'm excited. Thank you for being on. Thanks for having us on. Beautiful. Thank yeah, you, guys. you guys. I really, really enjoyed this. This was great. Thank you. Awesome. Blessings, All right. Peace. Bye, everyone.